All right, hello and welcome. So today we're going to talk about Octavia. Octavia is mind-blowingly powerful, as I'm sure many of you that have watched my streams are already very aware. But today, let's talk about her, because she not only has infinite scaling AoE damage that is completely safe and pacifies all enemies in range, she also has enough buffs for you and your entire team to make you feel like you're playing a Korean MMO. So, she's got quite a bit going for her, and quite a lot to explain about how to use her, because she is very, very easily misunderstood, because she comes with a few mechanics that no other Warframe has or is going to have ever. So, let's just start by showing the build. So this build is a very balanced build that is made possible by the introduction of Augur Reach. This extra 30% ability range really helps out Octavia a lot in delivering her not only damage but buffs to a much wider area uh, and that's very good. Otherwise this build is just very balanced across the board to be getting a lot of benefit from the extra strength and to have enough duration where you're not constantly constantly recasting. Uh, though I will say I would not blame anybody for switching out Transient Fortitude for an Intensify if you want to do less buff management. Uh, you're not going to miss the extra strength that much, but I just prefer Transient Fortitude myself. With that, uh, another thing that you can sub out to taste, basically, is I use Quick Thinking and Prime Flow together, as this makes it so that if I get caught out of invisibility, which is usually not what's going to happen, uh, or if I am inside AoE damage, which is the much more likely case, especially with the introduction of PoE, uh, this is going to keep me safe regardless, as this gives me a bit of bulk that I can fall back on uh, if I get caught in one of those AoEs. If you're not worried about that, Narrow Minded is a fine substitute, though be aware you are going to lose quite a bit of your range. Uh, so this is more so going to be for tighter environments where you don't need as much range. That being said, this makes it so that your buffs are very trivial to manage, uh, because the timers are much, much longer. I prefer quick thinking, though, because safety is important to me, especially when, like, this is the hangout frame. Uh, besides that... Because of Octavia's passive, you don't have to worry about getting to max efficiency normally because her passive is going to regenerate a lot of energy for you naturally. Uh, and just having the extra 30% efficiency from Streamline is more than enough in almost all cases to keep all your abilities always up. But just in case that's not enough in the situations where it's going to be a problem, like when there's Leech XMI, Arcane Energize is here to max me out from time to time. Uh, along with that, the secondary arcane, I'm using Consequence currently just because I like being fast, but this can be any damage dealing arcane, uh, like you can get the attack speed buff for melee weapons, like the like damage buff for pistols, kind of whatever you want. Uh, the second arcane slot is very, very flex. Uh, also, worth noting, if you don't care about going fast like I do, Lightning Dash is totally replaceable with one of the drift mods, be that like cunning or power drift if you feel like you want more strength or if you feel like you want more range. Uh, besides that, this slot is probably not going to be anything else. So this build, very balanced, but how does it work? So, Octavia has a lot going on, and before we talk about her abilities, let's talk in general about the Mandacord. So the Mandacord is this. The Mandacord controls all your abilities in how they work. So on the left here, we can see that we have Mallet, Resonator, and Metronome. Metronome is your 3, Resonator is your 2, Mallet is your 1. The BPM, I suppose, essentially, of the song you make with this determines the timing and damage structure of your abilities. Without going too much into that, what you basically want to do is have a very fast, like, upbeat song like this, which is just E1M1 from Doom. Uh, or, alternatively, you can just clear all the notes and you can just, like, do this. Like, you, just, you can just fill it up and then mute all this shit. Like, fill it up all the way around the circle and then mute it all. If you don't care about the music, that's the best thing that you can do, as this just makes it so that your timing is going to be, like, very freeform and you can get things done. That being said, I'm still going to continue to use E1M1 uh, because it works very, very well, and also I'm used to the timing. With that, what does that timing mean? Uh, so for your one, which is mallet... Uh, this will attract enemy attention, and as they shoot it, it will gain damage, which it then outputs into this area into all enemies. It scales up in damage very, very quickly, and enemies tend to evaporate themselves on this. 
Your two is this little rollerball. It will pick up your one and bring the damage to the enemies, and it also, as you can see, increases the range of your one while it's holding it. That being said, if your two is alone, it will pacify all enemies in range, making it so they cannot attack, which is useful in certain situations where you don't really care about killing the enemies. Uh, like, if you're just doing mobile defense, you can just throw it on your two and whatever. They don't need to die, they can just not shoot at anything, and that's just fine. But those are not really, like, gonna happen a lot. Like, those situations where you're not gonna kill enemies are not gonna happen a whole, whole lot. So generally, you're just gonna throw it on your one and leave it by itself and not combine it with the two, because you want to lock down a specific area. With that, let's talk about the three. So, your three has five buffs. If you jump in tune with the beat, and in the top you can see uh, Vivach, I think, I don't remember how it's said. Um, you can see that buffing up, and it can be refreshed, just like all of the buffs on your three. This is a run speed buff that you can get, and you get that by jumping on the beat, basically. It's pretty, like, lenient. Uh, this is part of the reason you bring, like, a fast tempo song. You can also shoot on the beat. And this gives you a multi-shot buff for any of your weapons. So that is also quite good. Uh, your three is also refreshable at any time. You don't have to wait for it to run out. And the buffs don't run out when your three runs out. Other buffs on this. If you melee in time with the beat, you get a buff that is just like more melee damage. And that's really good. Uh, and then the most important buff is... Well, there's also one other buff that is just if your three is active, period. Which gives you and all your allies in range more armor. That one's always active. There's no special activation stuff for that. But the most important buff is if you crouch in time with the beat, you go invisible. This also applies to any allies who are crouching around you in the AoE where you see these like pulses on the ground. Any like ally that's there that's crouching is going to be given invisibility whenever they crouch enough to hit the top of metronome. This is refreshable as long as your three is up. So you can just pop that timer back to the top whenever you want. And this is 23 seconds with this current build. That is incredibly powerful, because being invisible at all times is insanely good. Uh, along with that, it's also hilarious that your allies can run up to you and teabag to get buffs. And then, to top all of that off, you have your four. So your four puts out an area that looks like this, and this area responds to sound. In the top right, you can see I have a 201% up there, and that's changing as things happen. If I shoot, you're gonna see that spike up to 310%. This area reacts to sound and gives you a damage buff based on how much sound is in the area. That sound can be anything. If you're shooting, if you're jumping, if you're reloading, if your abilities are active, all of that stuff counts towards the sound in the area to give you and your entire team that's standing in this zone a damage buff. Along with that, if your one is in this area, it gets buffed and its range is greatly increased. So this gigantic area has infinite scaling damage hitting it that is being buffed by your four. So there's a lot of moving parts on Octavia. All of the parts individually are pretty good, but together they are just absolutely fucking devastating. Uh, so yeah, that's all the stuff there and to go quickly over some gear choices that you can make with octavia there's mostly the rule of take anything that's good super vandal it's a great gun sure bring it why not the Cyrus prime whatever baza whatever vectus prime sure tiger's prime who cares bring weapons that are generally good but one of the minor exception type things that is exceptionally good on octavia i find is actually the pox so, one of the very few things that Octavia's damage has a problem with is scaling enemy armor. And, a pox built like this with mostly corrosive damage is very, very anti-enemy armor, where you can just throw this into a group and strip all the armor off them, allowing your one to DPS them very, very effectively. Also, in general, the pox does quite good damage, so this is just good area clear, especially at lower levels. So, with that... Uh, oh, also, it's worth noting that if you don't care about weighting your elemental procs towards corrosive like I do, you can use auger packed here, and that's also fine. But I prefer using pathogen rounds to weight my procs towards corrosive. Auger packed is a good one here if you prefer to have more of a balance between blast and corrosive. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's show this off. It's I know it's a lot, but uh, 
it's also like insanely powerful and it's she, she's got stuff for like any situation so you go invisible that's cool these enemies are here it's fun that they exist but they're not about to yeah that's cool they played themselves uh so the pox is happening i'm just gonna throw that at this guy so that he doesn't have armor anymore these like enemies like they have nothing to do here that that's cool you played yourselves i'm just gonna move my my shit over here Ooh, aoe hit me See, and that shit, that shit right there is the reason why I use quick thinking. Because an AoE nicked me. Yeah, like, I can just do whatever I want. Like, that enemy, like, they, everything just dies. Like, these enemies are level 150, and, like, I got hit by, like, an AoE of some description, and that's, that's all that really happened. Otherwise, like, just nothing bad happened. This enemy is just over here, like, at my leisure. I'm always invisible, pretty much. I can just throw one into a group of enemies and they all kill themselves. I'm giving myself and the entire team standing in this area, like, a 300% damage buff. Like, Octavia just gets to do whatever she wants. Like, she ha there's no... Like, there there's no thing with this that's, like, a downside. It's just upsides forever like i have i can just throw my one into a group they all died i'm invisible at all times so i'm pretty much totally safe and any situation where i'm not totally safe quick thinking in this build is just gonna be like okay sure whatever you didn't die from that aoe even at level 150 it's fine there's no she she just doesn't care like no matter what the enemies throw at you octavia doesn't care like and when armor happens which is the one thing octavia even kind of cares about and that's not even really until like this level of 150 you can just pox them and then their armor is gone and then it's not a problem so yeah that's octavia nothing is a problem i will see you guys tomorrow hope you enjoyed this